The Inception score had one of the most mind-blowing brass sections, in my opinion. And when I'm curious about something in other people's tracks, what I do is I usually rewrite the tracks, trying to get as close to the original as possible to figure out the way the things were made. I did that with Inception last year. I wrote this Dream is Collapsing cover, which sounds something like this. This was the bit that I was curious about in the Inception score. How did Anzimer manage to create this such a huge wall of brass? I tried it with French horn and it didn't really work so well. So there was something I was missing and I tried to rewrite this track. Now, I wrote this a year ago and I made a one hour, one hour analysis on this track, but today I want to explain to you in five minutes how this wall of brass was created. The first thing you need to know is that French horns are not the only things responsible for this. So what we have here is like double basses, cellos, bass trombone, tubas, French horns, trumpets, and male choir. All those things put together create this sort of wall of sound, which is not made entirely of brass, but the brass is the main protagonist here. So there's four parts to this. So there's the first part, which is the low end, then there's the movement or main focus, then there's the razor sharpness, and then there's the air. Now, let's start from the low end. Low end is made uh, starting from bass trombone. Oh, sorry, uh, from tubas. It sounds something like this. They're just playing the bass note on octave 3. The, t the bass trombones are doing something similar, but also harmonizing, so... We have one patch of bass trombone, and these are from Metropolis Arc. One patch is doing the same bass, bass lines as the tuba, but it's, you know, octave, like playing those one octave higher as well, as to enforce this C and this B, so these are the leading tones we want them to be enforced. And then there's another patch of bass trombone doing these notes instead. So it's like harmonizing in between. These are trials, like for example, this one, uh, it's a power chord, you know, you have the, you know, the root note and then you have the fifth. Here we have the root note and then we have this note instead. It's like, a, if we add another note, it becomes a triad with an octave added on top, but he didn't do that. Uh, I think the, the reason why these, uh, these chords are so, have so much space in between them is the fact that as I always tell my tutorials, when you play chords in your bass line, you get a lot of like cluttered sound and that's not very clear. So Hans Zimmer here just did octaves and one note in between. It's a beautiful way to like harmonize your bass. So we have tubas doing that, bass trombones doing that. And then we also have uh, basses from Metropolis Arc 1 doing these sustains, which are actually octaved. So this is C3 and C4 on top. And then we also have cellos doing the G notes and like, you know, the things. So when we put them all together, they sound like this. We also have a sub bass on synth. And this alone is responsible for the hugeness of the sound. If you check out my tutorial, how, like orchestrating bass, about orchestrating bass, you're gonna notice the difference it makes when you have bass and when you don't. So instead, the second part, as I said before, is movement or, you know, spotlight or whatever. And it's brought by the French horn. Still here, this is Metropolis Arc. Now we have three layers of it. There's one layer that does this. And notice how it moves around. Bah, 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 bah. You know, this is important because it, it's like the face of this part. So you want to have movement here. That's what Hans Zimmer did. Now it's still playing you know, low, low, chord, low notes here, but here it goes higher. This is also playing marcatos as a way to stand out a bit more. So it's going higher on octave 5, like the bass hormone and tubas don't dare to do. And then he harmonizes as well. Just like the rest. So this is like the face of the our track. Again, we, you, we hear it because the French horn is more prominent in terms of like timber. Uh, it's also played on the highest octave so far. So that does it. Now as the third part, the razor sharpness, we only have the trumpets doing this. They're just enforcing, really, the French horn. If you play them together, you're gonna notice it. It's sharper now compared to this. So trumpets are very useful because as is, you know, they are tiny, but they are also sharper. Now, the fourth part, as I mentioned before, is the air. Now, that's what our, you know, brass lacks. So we added the male choir, and this is something I added myself, actually. It's not in the original track. 
I decided to add this first because this was a Bloodborne rendition of Dream is Collapsing, and second because I wanted the, the you know the brass to have more air. And when you add choir like that, even if it's low volume, uh, since it has that timber that 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 sort of sound, you add um, you know air to whatever you have going on. So if we check out this wall of brass taken alone, it sounds like this. Everything is doing the same notes. Like this is the beauty of this soundtrack or this bit that the chords are very basic, you know. But you have movement. Like these notes are the ones played by the French horn. These are the harmonizations, and these are you know the bass notes from the tubas and and uh, the double basses or whatever. When you have all of that combined, and also you have a powerful library such as Metropolis Art One or Oceania, which is playing on the choir, you get this sound. So that's how this wall of sound was made. So the thing you need to take away from this video is that French horn is amazing, but it's the face, you know, of the track. If we take away the French horn, this still sounds freaking mind blowing, you know, and uh, that's that's the that's the goal. You need to have something like that. Now, if you want to analyze the rest of the track, check out the one hour analysis, which we're going to leave down below in the description. And let me know if you uh, what you thought about this short tutorial. I think there's going to be a longer one this Friday on something else. But I thought of making like this sort of like five minute tutorial to explain you guys about recipes of how I created certain sounds, certain layerings or how to synthesize some things and stuff like that. And as usual, uh, subscribe to this channel if you're new, share this video with a friend. And if you want to learn more, you can hire me for a private lesson get the stems on Patreon or get the uh, Evanine course from the description. But that's all. I'll see you guys this Friday with another video. Bye-bye.